Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brantford Kia and welcome to our live video series. This is Wednesday, August 25th, 6th, 26th, sorry about that, uh, 2020. And we are today talking about the 2020 Kia Soul. Now it could be a 2021 Kia Soul, they're very similar. We're going to talk about the differences. Uh, I'm going to propose to you that this is an SUV alternative, especially if you're thinking you need a larger SUV. Uh, so we're gonna talk about some of that, but before we get into that, uh, if you're not watching with us live, you can skip ahead to the three minute mark. We're just gonna let our audience build in, up until then. Uh, in the meantime, if you wanna know how to join us live, let me show you how to do that. We'll jump right over here. We will go over to our YouTube page. So you're probably already on our YouTube page. Uh, if this video is embedded somewhere, just head over to our YouTube page. And if you go to Branf or go to the search bar, search for Branford Kia, you'll find us. We look something like this. Hit the refresh button like that at right around two o'clock. Today it's 2.01, I'm a little late. And sometimes you see the live video here. If you don't, like just now, let me just mute that. Uh, then you go over to the video section right here. Once you go there, you will definitely see our live video right there. Click onto that and you'll see it jumps up over here. There'll be a comment section over here. And if anybody who's on a regular, who's a regular or anybody else just wants to drop a comment of any kind, preferably, you know, friendly, uh, then we can just make sure those comments work. All right. So where are we at today? What's going on? First of all, I was going to put the screen over there. So let me just do that for a second. This will help me. There we go. I've got a hello. So we know the comments work. Hello to you as well. All right. Put it up the screen there. There we go. Now I can read your comments from across the room. So what are we gonna do today? In the next half hour, first of all, we're gonna say hi to Tim. There's our general manager. He's walking the lot, uh, looking very lost. Just kind of fun for me. He'll uh, watch this later and find out he's on camera. Anyways, what we're gonna do today, two things. First of all, the car in the background, just ignore it. It is going out for delivery. That is a 2020 uh, Kia Niro EV. We just did a uh, video um, of that. Put that up online this today. And like I said, that car is going out tomorrow, so we're gonna ignore it for this video, and we're gonna talk about this car. Uh, real quick in the news, what's going on news-wise with us? Uh, I don't think anything too drastic. Um, yeah, we've got, uh, like I said, lots of EVs got in. We're getting a couple Teslas in as well, so we're really becoming a heavy uh, EV dealer. We've done this for a while, but we're gonna have a lot of EVs in stock, so we'll be able to compare a lot of different EVs, including against up against uh, Teslas, kind of in the same market. All right, 10 seconds away from hitting that three minute mark. We will get ready to go here. Somebody's not convinced yet. Oh, okay. Is anybody else having issues with the feed? It looks like I am. So I'm gonna just cancel my uh, Apple TV. All right, looks like it's better now. All right, three minutes in, here we go. So today we're talking about the Kia Soul. This, like I said, happens to be a 2020 model. It could be a 2021. Now there are a couple little differences in this car. Uh, one in particular that will not be available in 2021. So if you are thinking about a Kia Soul, there's one feature that you should get. We'll talk about that in a couple seconds here. Um, those of you who know me, I drive a Kia Soul. Mine happens to be an electric vehicle. We're not going to really talk about the electric vehicles today. We're just going to talk about this car. Um, and why it is such a success. So this is, uh, what is it, Car Guide or Car Buyer? Somebody just named this the best SUV, uh, best value SUV. Now, I wouldn't call this an SUV, but I totally understand why. Uh, just so you know, a Kia Soul is a front-wheel drive car. We use this basic platform. So when I talk platform, really just talking engine and transmission. Same engine and transmission in the Forte, the Soul, and the Seltos. So we have had a comparison video up just the other day about the Kia Seltos to the Kia Forte. Somebody said, you know, I'm trying to get, you know, consider should I buy a economy car or should I buy a small crossover? And they said, can you compare the Seltos and the Forte? So we did that a few days ago. Last week, I think we did that. Uh, now what I'm doing is really the car that's in between those two. So if you're thinking Forte, maybe Seltos, this is kind of the sweet spot in the middle and has a few features the Seltos doesn't have. So even though the Seltos will end up costing a little bit more if you go full top version, you can get a couple features in this car that the Seltos doesn't have. And there's a few benefits to having a soul over something like a Kia Seltos. So real quick, uh, got about 13, 14 of you on. If anybody wants to give me a like, we've got three likes so far. Uh, you guys know how YouTube works. My bosses like to see likes. And also if you guys want to hit that like button, that helps us out. You know, this is how it works. If I can earn your subscription, that'd be great as well. All right, we got three more. We doubled our likes right there. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do in the next half hour, we're gonna look at trunk space, we're gonna look at rear seat space, we're gonna look at the front, the technology, we're gonna take your questions. I wanna show you lighting on this car because this one's got exceptional lighting. And we're gonna talk about a couple features, one particular feature that's going away, we're gonna jump at that right now. So this is a 2020 model. You will lose this feature. Now, I don't know if I can show this to you easily, but I'm gonna try again and again to do this. If you look, sort of this tinted side, there we go, you can kind of see, see those little grid lines beside my hand above that sticker? Those little tiny gray lines, you can finally see them. I figured out how to film it. Uh, so don't look at my hand, look to the right of my hand. There are little grid lines in this windshield. When you're driving, you really can't see them. Your eyes look past them. But uh, again, if I get the camera to sort of focus on my hand a little bit, you can see those grid lines. Those grid lines run down the side of the windshield. You can sort of see where they edge, where they end on the side of the windshield. They are absolutely amazing at clearing this windshield of ice, snow, fog, uh, you know, those kinds of things. They're excellent at doing that. And they are powered by a button right down here. That will be going away for 2021. So it's a super good feature if you live here in Canada with us or with me. I live in Canada. Um, and that feature will not be available on the 2021 model. It's a great reason to come by a 2020 instead of 2021, not to mention all the good deals on these cars. All right, while we're in here, let's just turn this car on. This is the EX Premium model. So it is a step up um, from the base. We'll talk about trim lines in a little bit. But I want to show you, let me just turn this off for a second. I want to show you a bunch of the features you get in this car. So real quick, if you've been watching any of our videos, you will see this looks incredibly familiar to all of you. Uh, left side tack, right side speedometer. There's an information display in the center. On a high level cell toast, you get a full screen display. On the sole, doesn't matter what trim level you get, you don't get that unless you go with an EV like I've got, then you've got a bigger display screen in the center there. That being said, you get all the information you need here. There's a ton of it. Um, you can see all sorts of things in here. I can go across. We can look at uh, navigation information. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, lane keep assist, driver attention warning. There's also tire pressure monitors. Those tire pressure monitors give you exact tire pressure per tire. So each wheel will be shown once you drive on there. So all the information that you need is there. It's just not the color screen that some people think is really the better look. And that's okay. We'll, we'll talk about that. Moving over here, when we talk about color screen, that's the excellent screen. This is the 10 and a quarter inch screen. And in this screen, you get a lot of little things going on. Uh, you can customize this all up. These are the widgets. You can customize them. There's all the apps over here. You can customize that quite a bit. Uh, we can keep going over more. Um, so very simple, easy to use screen. A lot of these swipe screens and tap screens, they don't really work as well as something like an iPad. This one does. And at 10 and a quarter inches, you're talking a very, very large screen. So think of our eight inch screen. That basically is two of these panels. That's what used to be an extremely large screen. Now you go extra wide again. So you get a lot of function with this. You can see you have factory navigation. Because I'm indoors, it thinks I'm in the dark. So that's why it's sending me into the darker lit um, area. If I wanted to, for instance, just use two thirds of the screen and see my radio as well, I can do that. But it doesn't have to be the radio. It could be a clock. It could be compass. It could be trip information. It could be weather, which we'll talk about in a second. And climate information and all map again, all kinds of stuff. So you can really customize that display. Really, really good system in here. Uh, like I said, if you can spring a little bit forward in the Kia lineup, uh, in the Kia Soul lineup, uh, a little bit extra, getting this screen is something that I don't think you'll regret doing. You also have Sirius XM satellite radio in this big screen. So satellite radio, first of all, you get three, free for three months. It does have free times throughout the year as well, but it is a subscription service. And you can have nice 60s on six, or you can listen to whatever kind of music you want, commercial free. So great system there, works really well. The other thing that's kind of nice about this system is you can do a bunch of different things. We're just going to see if this works right now. We are in a little area where it may not work. Um, let's just see. Doppler radar, there you go. Here's your Doppler radar for, for the area. As you can see, we are expecting rain here very soon. It's kind of cloudy outside. Um, Doppler radar right here from where the car is, kind of handy, kind of a cool system and not something you might expect inside a Kia Soul, but you get that. You also get traffic information. Uh, here's where there's some slowdowns, some construction, all kinds of information here. Uh, weather information, we can look at that as well. Uh, current weather, three hours from now. And uh, six hours from now, there's what's going on. Very cool system, and it's all in your Kia Soul. So I like that a lot. Uh, the other thing I like about this screen, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You can also use your cell phone for a lot of information in there, and you can use that, and it looks fantastic. There's just a ton to like about this screen, and you have it in this car. So scrolling down, 
Something else you may not expect. What you have here is a dual zone climate system. I'm just going to turn it down, the fan down for a little bit so you can hear me there. Um, but the dual zone climate system is not something you're going to find in the Kia Seltos. So again, stepping down, losing that all-wheel drive, going for a little different style, you can gain some things like that dual zone climate control. And like I said, in that 2020 model, you can get this windshield uh, defroster here, which again, I'm not turning on for me right now just because the car's off, but that is kind of a cool system. Works a lot like a rear defroster. Um, those little grid lines work. So you get all of that again and the automatic climate control. So you just set the temperature to whatever you want. If the driver and passenger want different temperatures, no big deal. You just uh, set up the different temperatures. So really good uh, system there. Um, just easy to be comfortable. A little further, we talked a lot about cell phone connectivity up here. What's kind of cool is you also have a cell phone area down here with wireless charging. That little area there, let me just move the gear shift out of the way. That little area there uh, will light up orange when your cell phone is sitting here and charging. Most modern cell phones are now wirelessly charging. You just set it there and your cell phone never goes dead. You just travel, you drop it in there and it works great. Um, actually, I should mention while we're talking cell phones and screens, the nice thing about this 10 and a quarter inch screen is you can pair two cell phones to it, not just one. So the driver can pair their cell phone for uh, calls and audio, but you can also have someone else in the car pair their phone for audio. So. Maybe your guest wants to put their phone here instead of you. Um, then they pick up their phone, they change to their music, and they can play their music all on this uh, device. And if the phone rings, if your phone rings, the driver's phone rings, the car will ring, it'll stop the music, and you can just uh, answer the phone. So two cell phone pairing, two for audio, one for the phone. And that allows you to not only keep your phone charged, but also you can choose your own music from your own phones all on this system. So pretty cool system. You can have two paired at the same time. While we're at it, we'll just show you the backup camera while we're here. There's our backup camera. You can see it's basically the eight inch screen. You can adjust the contrast and the brightness. A couple different views here as well. You can look straight down behind the car. That's what we're looking at right there. A little hard to see our lines in the floor right there, but you can see them pretty clearly in person. And that looks, like I said, straight down from the back bumper. You can change that around to the regular backup camera. And it does have guidelines. Blue lines go straight, guidelines follow the car a little bit, and you have an idea of where you're headed. So. Again, among the best backup cameras out there, clear. One thing I like about the Kia Soul, it's got a start stop button down here. Now, why does that make sense? Because I get in the car, I hit the start, I put it in gear, same hand. It's funny now, I hopped into the Nero EV the other day and I went to hit the start button and I actually turned on the heated seats uh, because they have the start button up here. It doesn't really make sense to have it up here because you gotta move your hand here, down to here. Uh, Kia Soul puts it down here. When it has a start button anyways, the key starts, you know, is in the normal spot. But kind of a cool spot to have it. It's a really practical spot, I like it. Rump roasters, heated seats down here. You can expect those in just about every Kia. Um, and drive modes as well. Two drive modes in this one, and I think this is right. Normal and sport. You don't really need uh, three drive modes in some of these cars, so normal and sport is perfectly fine with me. And uh, this is an automatic transmission that you can manually shift as well. You can tap it this way. On these IVT transmissions, you can uh, tap forward and back like that. Somebody asked, is there backup um, sensors, proximity sensors? So in the Kia Nero, there would be. In the Kia Soul, there would not be. Um, they do make bumpers a little bit more expensive to repair. Also, I would argue you don't really need them on the sole. Again, when we throw this backup camera in, I parked this car against my garage. You can see the bumper and you can back right up to, it looks like the wall's touching the bumper in my garage. Um, so you can be you know, a couple inches away very easily in this car. And the other thing is, if you look around the car, which we'll do right now, it's a little hard to show on camera. Visibility is excellent in this car. Uh, you can really see a lot. Where you can't see is right in that corner area and down, but again, that corner area is well shown by your mirrors and you have the backup camera there. And that back window is the back of the car. So, um, all right. Somebody said they like the handbrake. Let me just see if I can pull that back up again. I love the handbrake on the side of the Soul and the Seltos. So there you go. So we'll show you the handbrake here. I guess that matters to some people. Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of cool. I don't know. It's simple and easy to work. Uh, cup holders are right there. Got some stickers in the car just because they got other things going on. I did mention the rump roasters. I did not mention the steering wheel heater. Appropriately placed right here. Um, right there, you have the steering wheel heater. It used to be over in this area over here. And I view this as an area where you shouldn't really be touching a whole lot. Certainly not while you're driving. And in this car, you've got lane keep assist. And you've got the blind spot detection. And you've also got the auto stop start. This actually does save fuel. A lot of people have complained to me online about this system where the car turns itself off at a stoplight if all the conditions are met. 
um, and then instantly turns itself on as soon as you release the brake. Uh, early systems in other competitors' cars, yeah, they were terrible. Uh, this system works really well, and it does actually save you fuel. So that's a good area, but that's where they used to put the heated steering wheel on the sole in the previous models, and um, they now put it in a more logical space right by the seat heaters, so that kind of makes some sense. So really smart design. If the gear shift looks familiar, yeah, it's the same one as in the Kia Telluride. Can I start the car, car remotely, including steering wheel heater using Uvo? Yes, we'll talk about that in a second. So Uvo Intelligence is a system this car has. You can see those little buttons right there, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Let me just finish the interior here real quick. Uh, moving up the sole line, you can get smart cruise control. This one just has a regular cruise control. Uh, nice sort of round buttons, easy to work here. They're all the same buttons as on a Kia, another Kia, but they actually, the steering wheel is already warming up from when I turned on. Um, but they are in a kind of a round design, which I think works well with your hands. Automatic headlights and fog lights, which we're going to talk about on this car because they're really, really good. There are um, ambient lighting lights in here as well. I'm going to show you pictures of them later. You can sort of see a little bit of red in here. Um, maybe you can see it over here as well. It's just dim enough. Uh, somebody asked if there's Bluetooth. Yes, we already talked about Bluetooth in here. And uh, you also asked if there was a hybrid. It is not a hybrid. There is an electric version of this car, though, as well. So we're going to show you those lighting uh, in this area a little bit better. I have pictures of it that I did bring up on my computer just before we started. That's why I started this video, what, one minute late. So there's the interior. Uh, I want to point out the seats as well. As I jump out here, I'm just going to turn the car off for a second. As we hop out, the seats over here, they're manual seats but they are very, very adjustable. So a lot of time you had power seats because they were more adjustable. This raises and lowers the seat. You can see nice sharp um, side bolsters here. They're a leather-like feel. They're not leather, but leather-like. A uh, little accent with the sole here. They have good bolstering on the side. So they hug you nicely. They support you nicely. The cloth in here is kind of a grippier, tougher cloth. It's not a soft cloth. It's a little bit, uh, like I said, grippier and tougher, which I kind of like. I think it's more durable, um, and they just make it very comfortable feeling. So uh, real quick, I'm just going to adjust the seat to where I need it because I will show you back room space, and I didn't put this car in the bay. So let's just put it where I need it. There we go. All right, one other thing I'm going to show you inside before we talk about Uvo Intelligence. This particular model has, let's just shut the doors for a second. Uh, let's turn all the lights off or on. Oh, turn the door off. There we go. This particular model has the white LED lights that are really nice for um, for uh, making the car sort of look richer and more expensive. The white LED lights are really good for that. Tilt and telescopic wheels, what you would expect. We have that as well. One thing about the Kia Soul, when you sit in it, you sit square. So your legs kind of come down. They don't sit out like you would in the, the old coupes or those kind of things. You sit very square, so you get that SUV feeling. We're gonna talk about why this is very much an SUV as far as the feel. Gas mileage, we'll show you that in a second. Uh, let me just talk about Uvo Intelligence. So I didn't bring my, well, my phone is the one I'm filming with, so I can't show you my phone. Uvo Intelligence, the biggest feature on this is, um, you know, you can use that to remote start the car. So when you do that, um, I have it on my EV. Of course, I don't start my car, but I can set the climate on my car. It's really, really helpful because you can do things like start the car. On my particular one, you can defrost the windshield. Uh, you can use the steering wheel heater. Oddly, the, uh, the heat, the seated, sorry, heated seats are not something you can turn on with that. But if you can bring the car up to temperature, that works. Um, so then you can do that from your cell phone. So if you're in the mall and uh, the car is sitting out in the parking lot, you can start it right from your cell phone and it works really well. You can also um, do that from your house, your computer, anywhere you want. Works really well. It's free for three years on this car. And then you continue from there. Uh, actually, it might be five years, but it's 2021 is free for three years. So this is a 2020 model. I have to double check that with your salesperson just to make sure I've got all my model lines in, in uh, sync. I don't know the pricing beyond that. They'll probably package some pricing differently. Uh, they haven't announced that yet. So we still got several years before they have to announce that pricing uh, before people have to start paying for it. Uh, real quick, let me just jump to your questions here. Uh, one thing I want to show you, that ambient lighting. Let me just do that real quick, and then we'll jump to your questions. All right, here's my... Can a six foot three person fit comfortably? Yeah, we're gonna get to that in a second. You absolutely could. Here is, oh, let me just go away from there. There we go. Oh, oh no, hold on. This might be my personal information. Let me just backspace out of here. Hold on. Oh, I lost it. I lost it. Give me one second, guys. I'm just gonna show you the car. These are in my personal photos, so I just wanna make sure that I show you. Um but I show you the uh, correct photos. Brantford Kia. I'm not allowed to put my kids on uh, the internet unless I show them. So I just wanted to, I had it and I clicked the wrong button or something, or maybe because my computer went to sleep. 
Almost there. There we go. Okay, let me just show you my screen right now. This is a little bit better pictures I took. Come on, camera. Camera's fighting with me here. There we go. Aim down. You can see the ambient lighting. So you can see sort of a red lighting, and you can see in the door frame there. You can change it to multicolor at the same time, which is pretty cool. And there's the door right by the door handle. You can change that to many different colors as well. So kind of hard to show you a picture on a picture, but I don't have, I have the pictures on my cell phone and I'm filming with my cell phone. So ambient lighting this car, really kind of cool. And you can get them to sort of change as you go as well, mood lighting as well. All right, let me just jump to your questions. You wanted to know fuel mileage. We'll talk about that in a second. You wanted to know a few other things. Let me see. Gas mileage, six foot three, bloopers. Yeah, exactly. Bluetooth we talked about. Okay. Handbrake, there we go. In Quebec, the winters can get cold. I know no, I know no EV questions, but I'll slip one in and see if you don't notice. Here, well, the cabin. Yeah, you know what? So here's what we do. We go off topic at about 30 minute mark. We got another 10 minutes to get there. If you can hang on to there, I'll for sure go off topic and we'll talk about some of the off topic stuff. Uh, right, right now, I just want to jump into space. Uh, we're going to talk trunk space, rear seat space, and we had some good questions about that. So um, trunk of the Kia Soul. We're going to do lighting at the end as well. Those of you that uh, know me know I like to use my teddy bear as my trunk measurement tool. The reason I do that is because you can compare between videos. If I just filled the trunk or uh, the trunk area, if I filled the screen with the trunk area, it's hard to see which one has more space. What I like to do with the teddy bear is I like to put his tummy against the back seat and I guide him out here. Now you can see not a ton of space, but here's the thing with the Kia Soul. You do have quite a bit of space. This is that small crossover market. Um, think of a Mazda CX-3, something like that. A lot of the fastest growing automotive segment in North America is the small crossover segment. And that's where the Soul has lived its entire life. It's on, uh, what is it, third generation now? Threw those mats out of there. So it doesn't look like a ton of space, but it's actually pretty good. And then what happens, keep in mind my teddy bear is massive. You can put some stuff underneath here. Gym shorts, gym shoes, those kinds of things. What I like to do is drop this down like that. And now you've got a lot more space, a lot more. It really drops the floor quite a bit. I mean, here's my entire hand. And you can see it's almost my entire hand depth right down there. And that gives you a lot more space. You still have a little bit of underfloor storage beyond that. And then a couple of reasons I like to do this. Uh, if I go to the grocery store, if I'm carrying anything, cans or fruit or anything that can roll out, um, it now has a big wall back here where it won't roll out of the car. The benefit of having this, the floor in the higher position is when you fold the seats down, it basically goes from the floor flat to the seats. This one, of course, if you fold the seats down, it would be a little bit of a step up, but you get a lot of space. Is there a 12-volt port in the rear? Uh, oh, I thought there was. Yes, there we go, this side. There is, right over here. So you can see that. So if you have a cooler or something like that, electric cooler, you can plug it in there, tons of space. And you do have tie downs on that floor. So no matter whether your floor is higher or lower, you can secure things, strap them down, bungee them down, whatever you need to do, keep them flying around. And it's super easy to adjust. So I just had it down the lower position. There I am, it's up in the higher position again. Super simple, we adjust ours all the time. No USB in the back seat, good question there. Now let me jump in the rear seat. So one of the things I find with people is they decide because they have a growing family, because they have tall kids, because they take uh, taller people around, they want it, uh, older people want to take other adults out. They say, oh, this is too small of a car. I love the fuel economy. I love that. I love a lot of things about it. Some people love or don't love the styling, but they always say, oh, that's not going to work for me because I sat in the whatever competitor's car and that class of car doesn't work. And here's where the soul is absolutely brilliant. You jump in here and uh, let me just take the sticker and let me just flip this uh, camera around. Here's my lovely bald head. Everybody likes looking at that. You can see how easy it is to get in here. Now I don't really go down a long ways. I don't uh, sit down. I kind of, my hips kind of slide into the car. So here I am in the back seat. I'm about six feet tall. Somebody said, can a six foot three person sit in here? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because first of all, even if I was like 6'4", and all of that height was only in my torso, you could fit in here. And check out my legs. Try to get down here a little bit. They are flat against the seat. I can move my legs around. I'm sitting square again. Now try sitting square in a small car with your legs going down here and back here and having your legs flat on the seat. You can do that in a Kia Soul and check out my knee room. Tons and tons and tons of knee room and I'm sitting behind a six footer. So yeah, can you fit a six foot three person in the back? You bet you can. And that's why this car is really, really great. While we're here, 
25 of you are on right now. We're 25 minutes into the video. I got 10 likes. If anybody wants to hit the like button, if I've done a good job so far, if I'm holding you on, do me a favor, hit that like button, and uh, hopefully I can earn a few more before we're done. Thank you, everybody. Got one more. One more like out of that. All right, you guys wanted to know about USB ports back here. Let's talk about them real quick. There is one down here. Keep in mind, this is just shipping plastic. This car hasn't been fully uh, ready for sale. All this stuff is just uh, can be gone. Same with on the floor there. You do have a USB port right back here. It's kind of nice. And the backs of these seats, you have a pocket over there. It's kind of a leather type pocket, which is good. And this one is a plastic seat. These plastic seat backs and that leatherish, you know, I'm sure it's not real leather, but that leatherish type feel means if you have kids in this car and you need to wipe down the seats, you're not damaging the leather. You're not scratching that or, uh, or damaging it up in any way. And same with this, you just take a wet cloth, wipe the seats down and the car is clean. So very practical stuff right there. All right, just want to show you lighting on this car, and then we're going to wrap this video up and we'll get to the off-topic questions. I don't have a problem doing that. I also want to make sure if there's any more on-topic questions, if you have a question about this particular car um, or the Kia Soul in general, let me know, and then we'll jump off-topic in around 30 minutes if there's no more questions. So start asking questions now. I'll get to them in a, just about a minute or so. Lighting is a big thing on this car, and I didn't think it would be such a big deal. When I first heard of this car, we saw the front end, they talked about it, they sort of released a teaser image of the front end of this car. And they said, you know, like, just gave us an idea, a different face. And we knew they'd have LED lights in here. And you know, LED lights are nice, big whoop, right? Just a little bit brighter, a little bit less, a uh, little bit whiter, a little bit uh, less energy use. These are among the best headlights I've ever seen in any car at any price. Let me show you what you've got. Super bright lights. That little light flickering right there, that's not actually flickering, it's just the way the camera interacts with it. But that light there, is your daytime running light. Above it is your headlights, and down here are your fog lights. Now watch them. See how they kind of light up from right to left? That's because they're all aimed just slightly different, and they have um, really, really good lighting of the road. In addition, you get the, um, you get the headlights of, um, sorry, you get the um, high beam lights that turn on and off automatically. Kia system, I mean, we're not the first First car company to do that, Kia system is excellent. Not only does it sense cars in front of behind you or in front of you, whether you're following them or coming towards you, it also senses when you're in city lights or street lights and it turns that system off. So these LED lights, if you can spring for that, go for it. The trim level below, you have halogen lights down here and your signal lights up where the headlights are. But if you see these ones with the LED lights, if you can, that's something I highly recommend going for. This one also has a sunroof. I don't know if I pointed that one out for you. So there's a sunroof, there's a side light or the side of the car. Let's jump in over here. We'll show you the rear lights and then I'll jump to your questions and then we'll head off topic. All right, LED lights along the backside as well. Just kind of look pretty sharp. Inside there is where your brake lights are. So you have the same lights that stay lit and your brake lights go there. Interestingly, the only lights that are not LED are the rear signals. The front signals are bright LED, they look sharp. Rear signals, I guess they do that to keep some resistance. I'm not sure, uh, resistance in the line, uh, but yeah. The other thing that's kind of cool is all these windows are tinted, obviously not the front windows, but uh, you get that SUV style tint in the rear here, which is kind of nice. Floating roof look looks pretty cool. I really like these wheels. These are a little bit bigger wheels on this EX premium model as well. So there's the quick tour of the car. Maybe not so quick tour of the car. If you stuck on this long, I appreciate you. Uh, let me just jump to some of your questions. We've got a whole bunch in here. Okay. Is there USB? I think we talked about that one. So maybe we'll go past. Uh, 350 liters plus. Oh, so the liters of the trunk space. You know what? I didn't. Grab that, let me just see if I can find that real quick in the specs here, I'm on the right page on the website. Trunk space, da 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 da. Uh, oh, sorry, specifications, measurements, okay. Leg room, front room, capacities. Cargo capacity with the seats folded, 1,758 liters with the seats up, 663 liters with the floor lowered, 530 liters with the floor raised. So quite a bit of difference there. So 530 liters in the trunk with the floor raised, 663 liters with the floor lowered, and uh, 1,758 liters with the floor raised. So there's uh, your trunk measurements. Let me jump over back to your questions. Uh, can I sit the back seat? I can. Is it automatic? This one is. Actually, all Kia Souls are automatic uh, for 2020. Maybe. I think. I've never seen a uh, standard one, so there we go. How much does it cost? That's a good question. We'll get to that in 10 seconds. Uh, rain sensing wipers, not on this Kia Soul. That's correct. Is it better than a Nissan Altima? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Don't talk to me about the Ultima. I used to have family members that owned that. Not a good car. How much does this car cost? Okay, let's talk about that right now. This particular car 
Here's the window sticker. Again, we're going upper trim line. 26995 is the MSRP right there. So 26995, bottom right side, you can see a bunch of the information there. Uh, this car has lane keep assist. It can help steer yourself, keep you centered in the lane. A lot of features for that. But let's look at the sole lineup for a second. I had it here, hopefully I didn't uh, lose it. Uh, maybe I did. Oh, no, I didn't. So this is the 2020 model range. Come on, camera. Somebody else asked horsepower, 147 horsepower in all Canadian Kia Souls, unless you get the EV, then it's a little different. Uh, 8.6 and 7.1 liters per 100 kilometers. You have the LX, you have the EX, you have the EX Plus. This EX Plus is where you move to those LED lights. I really encourage you to do that if you can spring for it. 22,895 to 24,895. There is a price difference there. You do get a few things that are nice. Scrolling across to the EX Plus. Uh, which, sorry, we just had EX Plus. EX Premium is the car we're looking at. So then, in addition to the LED lights, you also get that big 10 and a quarter inch screen, UVO Intelligence, the push button start, and the mood lamps. So mood lamps, yeah, they're pretty cool. I don't need them. Push button start, I prefer that. 10 and a quarter inch screen, UVO Intelligence, and uh, dual zone climate control, those are kind of cool. So uh, base model, we'll show you that in one second. GT Line Premium, that's going to change in 2020. Uh, EX Limited, again, that car is gone for 2021 as well. GT Line Limited. So some of these upper line ones have changed for 2020. You guys want to see the lowest price? LX Model 21195 is where this car starts. Again, a few different options than the ones I showed you today, but same engine transmission, same body, same type of thing there. All right, let me just jump off topic. Actually, we'll finish with the on topic and then we'll jump off topic. Okay, will Kia ever have a truck? I'm not sure. All right, what was the question somebody asked earlier about the off-topic stuff? It was EV related. Uh, da, da, da. Does this Soul EV heat up well? Cabs okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Soul EV, let's just talk about that real quickly. We did do a video on that just the other day. I did a one-year ownership of my Kia Soul EV. It was one of our live videos. It's a little long. Can you, uh, grab a coffee, maybe a beer. You can drink every time I say, um. Anyways, uh, I did do a video of that. Uh, we've got a lot of videos of Soul EVs. Soul EV, two things happen. In that exact video, the air conditioning I showed you, um, the air conditioning, it cools down literally in seconds, uh, from cool to cold in a matter of seconds. Heat, same thing. You get pretty much instant heat. I've never had an issue with staying warm in my Soul EV, and my Soul EV does not have the heat pump that captures energy from the... Um, a regenerative braking and sends it through. I have the lower level Kia Soul. So it's not an issue for me. Um, I had some people say that the feet are not as warm as it would be in maybe a gas car. I've never had any issue with any of that. And again, I have heated seats, heated steering wheel, instant, or not instant, but I mean pretty much instant heat in the Soul EV. So very good that way. You will sacrifice some range with the heat use in an EV and you will sacrifice some range with the fan use in an EV. So something to keep in mind. And in the winter, your batteries will have a little bit less range. Again, range we can talk about in a different video, but uh, hopefully that answers your question. Somebody else asked an off topic question. Where are we? K5 prices embargo to September 2nd, but when do you expect to see the cars arrive at the dealership? Okay, that's a great question as well. So we have ordered our first Kia K5. Um, no timeline uh, that I have. I'm going to guess mid-October. Um, like I said, as soon as we can talk about pricing, I think, is that next week? I don't know. I'm going on vacation next week again. Uh, soon after I get back, we can talk about pricing. I, I have seen the pricing, so I know the range uh, that we're looking in. Um, I just can't talk about it. So... Um, we will be able to give that to you soon. Uh, it's going to be a good value, put it that way. If I get the EV and my wife's cold in anyway, you're going to owe me a... T <laughs> so if I get a TV and your wife's cold, you're going to call me? Listen, dude, if your wife's cold, you should be calling you, not me, man. <laughs> All right. That was fun. Okay. Uh, yeah, just so you guys know quickly with me, we do these live videos every weekday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we do these... Uh, uh, live videos every weekday. Next week, I do happen to have uh, another vacation. I know I was already on vacation this month. August is a really good month for me to go on vacation because come September, first of all, all the new cars are kind of introduced in theory by July. August is a slower month, um, and then they start showing up after August. So that's why I tend to take my vacations around August, and uh, I am going away next week again. So we have two days left this week to do the live videos, and... Um, if you have a suggestion, I've got 
couple ideas, but I love when you guys have suggestions. If you guys have something you want to see in the video bay tomorrow or the next day, uh, feel free to do that. We're going to stay away from EVs. We've touched on them a lot, and I have more coming from them, so it won't be any EV videos just because I've hit a lot in a row here, and I did just release a video on that car, an edited version that's shorter. Uh, 2020 Sorento seems to be a popular one. I think we'll probably put a Sorento in here as early as tomorrow, uh, but if you guys have suggestions, we'll take care of that. And uh, 2021 Sorrento, trust me, I'd love to. We don't have it yet. Uh, as soon as the 2021 shows up, we will be the first one to show you live. And uh, we'll go through that uh, information as well. All right, we're 35 plus minutes in. There's 21 of you still hanging around here. 16 of you have given me likes. There's a few that haven't. If you want to give me a like, I'd love that. That would help uh, for a bunch of ways. Um, oh, you know what? While we're talking off topic, somebody said Forte G 2021 Forte GT. We have a 2020 Forte GT here, Forte 5 GT. The 2021s, there's slight changes in there. Forte 5 GT is going to be available with a manual transmission, which is super cool. Uh, 2021s are going to make it a little more in line with the Forte 5 GT. So lots of information to talk about there. September is going to be a good month to talk about all this stuff. Uh, what else we got? Stinger. Stinger is not on the lot right now. Uh, I'd like to do another Stinger again, but we just um, sort of between Stingers. We sold out of some. I don't think we're going to put it, pull any in. Uh, unless we sell a 2020 that we can dealer trade or get somewhere from compound, but I don't think we'll pull any 2020s in. We're waiting for 2021 stingers now. So I think we're going to sit on stinger for a bit. Um, yeah, there we go. I think we covered everything and, uh, rear seating room for tall passengers. Um, yeah, if that's what you like, well, this car, we showed it in this video already. So that's good. All right. I think we've covered everything we need. And we're going to head off, uh, like I said, the next two days. I'd love to hear your idea. I'm on Instagram at Peter underscore Brantford underscore Kia. So if you want to let me know on uh, Instagram or hear what you think I should do tomorrow, let me know. I would love to do that for you. 36 and a half minutes in. I think we're good. Thank you for all the likes. If I've earned your subscription, that'd be great. Uh, lots more content to come. And uh, yes, I am going camping next week, but we'll talk about that tomorrow and Friday. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon. We'll talk to you tomorrow.